Hi guys, this is Rob from RV Travel Buddy and RV Travel Quest. Uh, today I thought I'd review with you what we use for internet. And everybody does this a little different and I can guarantee you one of the services we use is probably not advisable. So anyway, um, one of the things we want to talk about is first of all the Wi-Fi Ranger. Now what the Wi-Fi Ranger does is it's a system we have in the RV that has a router and we use that router for the internal use of our RV meaning that this router we've given its own network name and so all of our computers all of our cell phones even our wireless printer is tied into that network and that network also is tied into a antenna system on the roof and a, an also an internal uh, extender unit which is called uh, just go and another one's called um, the elite and so what happens is is the antenna on the roof will send out a radio signal radio signal and so you need to remember that to see if there's any free internet or internet connections, we'll say that first, in the area with, and it can go up to a two mile range. So what's really nice about that is, for example, uh, in Seaside, when we went there, we asked them, do you have internet? And the first thing they said, oh yes, we have it in the clubhouse. Well, if you know how much video editing time and stuff that Sherry and I do, there's no way I want to keep going to the community center. So what I kept in mind is, first of all, remember any extenders using radio waves. So if you have things blocking it or a hillside or anything like that, that could interfere with um, receiving um, signals from outside. So what we did is we made sure and kind of took a look at the where all the different spots are that they wanted to park us. And we also, we made sure we had a good view of the community center from our RV space. So all I have to do is I turn on the Wi-Fi Ranger, told it to use the antenna on the roof, see if there's any internet. Of course it saw the internet that's over at the community center. Of course they give you the password when you check in anyway. So Sherry and I enjoyed free internet from the RV park which it is free internet it's just they only provided it at the community center wi-fi ranger not a problem as long as you're in a radio you know a straight shot to the source of the internet uh the wi-fi ranger can bring it right on in and bring it nice and strong so that's example of how we use the wi-fi ranger we use it for our network and we use it as an extender to try to get any free internet's available. So if I was at uh, Walmart overnight boondocking, we could use Wi-Fi Ranger to tap into maybe uh, uh, the Starbucks across the street or a, a McDonald's, or even if Walmart had free internet, we could probably tap into it from the parking lot. So that's how critical Wi-Fi Ranger is to Sherry and I. So that's one source of how we get our internet. Um, the other source is if we're in a place that has internet throughout the RV park, we do always ask where the antennas are in the park so we can be close to them. Doesn't really matter when you have a Wi-Fi Ranger, but before that's what we used to do. And if their internet's um, okay, we can use that. We don't get too greedy. Um, it's not the kind of internet you're going to get um, if you're at a house and you have cable internet or um, or a DSL but you'd be lucky to get one two maybe three megabytes per second and we can function with that it may take all day for me to upload a video but hey I just set the computer up for upload and we go for a ride somewhere <coughs> the other source of internet we use is well here's the here's the part that I don't recommend but you'll function just fine with it is we use Sprint. Now that's probably the lowest one out of the big four major folks. Uh, you got 
T-Mobile, you got Verizon, you got uh, AT&T, and then Sprint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's how they rank, uh, Verizon being the best. Anyway, um, so the reason we stay with Sprint is we're grandfathered in with unlimited data. And we've looked into the other systems and it's just cost-wise is way over, over the top. So what we use, we used to use Hotspot, but now we use an air card. And we use this, um, we set up our program for 30 gigabytes a month. Is that enough? Not for us. For you, maybe. But for us, we're uploading videos all the time. We can, I can wipe out 30 gigabytes of data really fast. So we have to uh, really manage our data closely if we're in a boondocking situation. Now Sherry and I aren't big boondockers. We like nice RV parks. We like to go to places that typically are going to have internet. So we're usually fine, but occasionally it happens, and that's uh, where we just don't have the internet, and that's where this comes in handy. So uh, uh, I, it's the cost is a little different for everybody. I believe the cost for 30 gigabytes is around $110 on top of your normal cell phone bill. So uh, it's plus or minus, I'm not sure. But that works for me and Sherry. So free internet if it's available, RV parks, if it's available, doesn't matter if the uh, internet's in a community center or not because we have the Wi-Fi Ranger extender. Um, and then as far as the RV, when you come into our RV, you will see that we have a network. And if you got your phone and, and went in there and you'll see, hey, there's a network called something on there. I'm not saying it out loud. And then if you're in here and you say, hey, I need to connect to the internet, we'd give you a password and you could get on our internet, no problem. So that's how we do it. I hope that was helpful to you. Is it the best way? I can't say it's the best way. We don't have the best cell phone service. If you're fortunate enough to have a really good uh, cell phone service and you're able to get a good price on uh, getting uh, an air card, this is the way to go. This is the best. Um, the most dependable. The problem is with Sprint is we can get into places where I don't have a cell phone. So there is one other piece of equipment that we have is we use a mobile Wii Booster for our cell phone. So when we need it, I have uh, the little um, what's called uh, Wii Booster. It, it has a cradle and we put this in the cradle and the antenna goes outside our window and usually uh, I have if I don't have my car parked next to the RV, I'll bring the, the antenna and stick it on top of the roof of my truck. Reason being is the little antennas that have the magnet on it need metal underneath it to receive uh, signals better. So if you can't do that, then Sherry gets mad at me because I steal one of her cookie sheets. And we'll actually attach it to that and try to put it on a picnic table. So... Uh, there's a lot of other things you could do where you could put a, uh, a special antenna up on your roof and, and bring it in, but we just kind of keep things mobile because the mobile Wii Booster is nice to have if we want to have it in the truck while we're driving too. So we we went with a mobile um, cell phone booster. for um, and, and if you're going to have Sprint, you're probably going to want a booster for sure. Uh, so... I'm sure as our travels, we're going to get into places where we're just going to scream and can't get internet at all. And we've come close, but it hasn't happened yet. But we also don't go out quite as much out in the boonies as other folks um, on, on boondock as much. So we tend to like the bells and whistles and city life. So, uh, um, you know, we those places tend to have the services we want. So I hope that was helpful. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Travel Buddy and RV Travel Quest. If you have any questions for us, uh, just put comments down below. And, and we appreciate it if you take the time to like our videos and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Bye now. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to discover our other YouTube playlist. RV Travel Buddy, which is tips, resources, and services. RV Travel Quest, where you can follow Rob and Sherry on their real RV travel experiences. RV Living Mission Series, which T 
teaches people how to prepare to be an RVer in the future, the insane RV360 videos, our amazing RV.TV, where amazing stories come from RVers, and last but not least, RV Talk Radio. And most of all, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again.